Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. On this channel, uh, we normally talk about cycle carts and cycle car racing, but today we're talking about how to build a wooden canoe. Thanks for joining us and uh, stay tuned. So this past October, my son decided that we should buy a canoe. We went looking for a canoe and had a hard time finding one that wasn't uh, beaten up or destroyed or bleached by the sun. And we found a set of plans on the internet and some videos to go with it. And so we decided to build our own out of wood, plywood, marine varnish, and uh, marine grade epoxy. So this thing turned out really good. The set of plans we found online were really detailed, very accurate. There's a few things I'm going to go over that I did a little different than the plan. I'll explain what those are as we go through. So this is a supplement to the videos that are already on the internet. I'm not going to re-show you how everything was done. There's already a very good video kind of step-by-step -step in addition to the plans you can buy. It's very good, very well done. That's what we followed and it worked really well. If you follow those uh, guides, you follow the plan. And a couple little hints I'm going to give you together with that, I think you're going to have a really good result. Maybe even better than what I got because I'm not a woodworker by trade. This is something we decided to try. And man, it worked out great. Uh, we took it out for a little spin on the lake yesterday. I got a little bit of video and uh, some pictures of that. We'll show you here a little later. But uh, this thing turned out really good. So I'm going to show you a couple items from the plans right now that uh, I would add the plans or maybe say modify the plans um, to make it uh, work out really good. Now you can do anything you want, of course, but this is what I did. So uh, let's get started. So here's the author of the plans. His name is Michael Storr. Uh, here's his email and there's a plan of a, a .com. You can order these. I don't know if it, I guess you got them off of his website or another website, but at um, any rate, he's a super great guy. He's on Facebook. He's got a great Facebook web page to uh, answer directly answers questions uh, when you're building one of his canoes. So this is the Quick Canoe 155. And uh, this is, I think, the simpler of the canoes that he offers. He's got a couple different versions. But uh, we had this, when I printed, I took the FedEx Kinkos and just had them printed and bind it for me. It makes it a whole lot easier just having just loose paper. So I'm gonna tell you a few things that I did differently than the plans and to clarify a few things, because this is written by someone from New Zealand and everything's in metric. So if you're in America, metric, uh, might be a little foreign to you. I'm actually enjoying using the, met the metric system. It's something I hadn't really used before other than on my wrenches for my, you know, imported cars or whatever. But um, anyway, let's get, uh, let's take a look. So the, the plans are pretty specific. It gives you all the materials list you need in metric and in imperial, which I found out that's what we call standard <laughs> or what other people call standard. Anyway, so everything's pretty specific. Now, some of the woods that he specifies, you'll have to ask someone in the Home Depot or whatever what they have that's comparable with that. That's what we did here in Arizona was like redwood. And I think we used uh, Douglas fir. We were able to find Douglas fir. You want stuff that doesn't have a lot of knots in it. Um, the second thing I'll add to what he put on here, and I wrote this all down, uh, I used the West system, the epoxy system, and I just used all their products. But there's one item he doesn't really mention. He mentions the fortifying gluing powder doesn't tell you what to use because there's many, many different systems. But there's one other that you'll need, which is the filleting blend. And in the video you watch, uh, they might call it wood fibers or wood dust, wood fiber dust. Uh, basically, that's what this is. If you open a can up, it's just pow wood powder. Um, you add that to your epoxy, and that's what it creates the fillet joints and to, to, to fill voids and also to uh, glue things together. This is the colloidal silica is used for gluing. It creates like a honey thickness in your... Your mixture epoxy, then you add these items to it to make them thicker. And this is used for gluing things, and this is used for the fillet joints. And a fillet joint is, um, is this joint that's in the inside. It creates like a, a thick bead of caulk. It's very hard, and once you epoxy over it, it gets shiny and smooth. Uh, you can see it, the mine are probably bigger than they needed to be. Um, anyway, so that, that joint right there is a common built, boat building practice, apparently, on inside joints. And uh, I used it in a few other spots, but that was the primary use for it. The second thing is fiberglass tape. Now I had a hard time finding two ounce fiberglass tape. So we ended up buying a large roll of two ounce and I cut it into strips. So that worked okay. Um, but it's really messy stuff. In fact, let me show it to you. Okay, so this is a two ounce fiberglass mesh. You see this material, it's almost see-through. You could use something thicker. Uh, and when you cut it, this stuff gets really fibrousy and falls apart really easy. So if you can find it in a two inch roll that's bound on the edges, it'd be a whole lot easier. This I really fought, just, it was just a mess. Um, something a little heavier might be better, but he recommends a two ounce because it doesn't build up a big giant seam on the outside. So that's the purpose of that. And getting it in, again, a two inch strip uh, would make it a lot easier. 
Um, but I just couldn't find it in the market anywhere in America. I had to buy this online from a probably less support. I'll try to find my records and I'll try to put links to the different places where I bought stuff in the description or in the thing on there on the YouTube pages. Uh, the other thing, he says solvents to get epoxy off your hands don't work. Vinegar works. Actually, that's true. Vinegar works great. You get a little bit of epoxy on your hands or your skin, the vinegar takes it right off. It's kind of amazing. I'm not sure exactly why it does it, but it seems to work great. So on the while we're talking about the epoxy uh, West system, so I got the larger uh, container because I was going to coat the entire boat. You don't have to coat the entire boat, um, so you can use the smaller containers or smaller amounts. So I got the big can, we got the pump system, and I use what they're calling this special clear hardener, and this is a very slow speed hardener. Um, they do have a slow one, they have a fast one and a slow one, and then this one is super slow. And I use this because I'm in Phoenix, Arizona, and I started this in October, it was still 100 degrees outside, and the guys at West System recommended it. I think probably I should have used the standard slow because I had a lot of problems with um, dripping, the epoxy kind of uh, creating drips, and I had to work a lot to sand off the drips, and it was, it was probably better if I not done that. And actually, I'll discuss what I should have done uh, when I get to that part of the book. So you got your filleting blend and your colloidal silica. I ordered that all at one time. Um, here in, Air in Phoenix, we've got a local supplier called West Marine. They do stock these items. They're not the same company. It's just called West Marine, but they stock this system. So the, that's one of the other reasons I chose this system was because if I needed more, I could go get it locally. Uh, it was a little cheaper online. And then this is the paint that I used. Um, this is something I didn't search out. I wanted to paint it red. And I looked at all a lot of different reds, but I ended up having this gallon for a project that I had not, didn't use. So we ended up reusing that, repurposing it. And then the inside is uh, varnished with this captain's varnish. Again, I got that at West Marine here in Phoenix. And this one little can, there's probably this much left in it after varnishing the entire interior. So that, one, that little quarter where this is was plenty. Um, let's move on to the next thing. On the epoxy pumps, I forgot to mention something. These pumps are really, really good. They're 20 bucks. They're worth it. You don't have to measure anything. You get one pump here and one pump of this one gives you the accurate ratio. So if you go with the West system, that, that pump system really makes it easy to measure your materials. So that's it on the epoxies. Okay, let's talk about scarf joints. I didn't know what a scarf joint was when I got started on this. Basically, you're taking your three quarter inch pieces of wood and you're making an eight foot piece into a 16 foot long piece. So you're going to put them together. So in the plans, it's pretty specific, and they want you to use this planer to plane the pieces down to a one, by, one to six slope. So every, I'm not sure exactly how that all works out, but it's like six inches of slope in your three quarter inch pieces. It's a pretty long slope. And then you're gonna take a piece of angle iron like this or any kind of straight metal, cover it in plastic like a uh, packing tape, and then clamp them down once you put your epoxy with your colloidal silica on it, this material, and clamp them in there. And it's really hard to see, and this is the, the picture that's on the plans, but that's the angle. Then you put your glue on it, and then you put them together and clamp them together. Anyway, it, it, there's a better video on the internet. I'm not going to show exactly what it was, but one thing to keep in mind, it wasn't clear in the plans. Uh, it says you need a 16-foot long piece, so you're taking two 8-foot long pieces. But once you take 6 inches off each end and you scarf them together and glue them, now it becomes like 15 feet long. So it ends up being a little short for your out wheel. So you're actually going to need to add like six or eight inches onto that one of those two pieces. So you're going to make those scarf joints. We'll show you on the boat. You see the line right here? This is where the scarf joint is at. There's one here, and there's one here. So the inside one, two eight foot pieces is perfect. It fits in. You trim the edges a little bit to fit it in there. The outside one comes up a little bit short. So on one end, you're going to have a third scarf joint. Unless you get 10 foot long or nine foot long material, then you wouldn't have that problem. But the stuff I had that I got at Lowe's was eight feet long. So I was ready to put it on. I started clamping it down to as a trial run. I found out we were about five or six inches short. So we had to stop, make more cuts, and uh, glue them up again. So I will tell you, this is a lot easier to cut on a table saw than it is with the planer. Uh, the videos and Mr. Uh, Storer's plans show you using a hand plane, uh, which is, of course is a lot of work. So on a table saw, if you can get the angle right, and my neighbor has a table saw, thank God, we're able to get those cuts right. So that worked out really well. So just a word of advice, you'll need Longer than two, two eight foot pieces for the outside of the out whale or gun whale, whatever you're going to call this outside piece. So, I'm showing you some video of the inside of the boat here, and this is all exposed. Uh, this just epoxy with the varnish over it. And I had a really hard time because I epoxied it after the boat was assembled. In other words, the three panels, the sides and the bottom were attached, and I was epoxying this, and the epoxy would sag and, and run. 
So I'd have to sand it down and then do it again and sand it down. And do, and anyway, it was a giant pain. So I found out on page 35 of the instructions, Mr. Store recommends pre-coating these panels before assembly. So that's one thing I would, if I was doing this again, that's what I would do. I would pre-coat, epoxy coat all these big giant wood panels, plywood panels. Um, you could do it after you've made your, your butt joints or these, these panels here to attach the panels together. You can, then you could epoxy the large long panel together. And the recommendation would be to leave, you know, mask off this section because you're going to glue this piece on later. You don't want to glue epoxy to, to glue. You want to glue epoxy to clean wood. Same thing with down here. And then you would just come back in later, put a little more in there if you missed some spots. Um, that would save a ton of sanding, a ton of work. Because I really worked myself to death sanding off runs. Uh, it was really un unpleasant. So that's something I would do again. So if you use the fast acting stuff, you may not have the running problem I did. But that was something I had a problem with. Okay, so let's talk about what I did slightly different than the plan. So the plan calls for two slats on here, in these areas here and a flat piece of plywood in between. Um, I elected not to use that flat piece of plywood in there. I felt like this would be more comfortable, kind of like a park bench. Uh, in fact, these are thinner material. And I was a little worried that they would be delicate, but they're actually pretty strong. Uh, we used it, no problems at all. And the other thing we did, which was different, was I put a dry cell up here. Uh, instead of on this knee, the normally knee would be right about here and right about here. I extended it a couple inches added this panel and then we cut this hole in here and I got this this uh, marine grade hatch I think it was like $14 from the same place that sells all the uh, plans and stuff so that just screws in there's a silicone bead underneath it you put your cell phone in there your wallet whatever Oops. Maybe that was one hand when you're on the lake uh, just in case you do get wet or tip it over or whatever your some stuff's gonna stay dry and it also provides a flotation spot because this is sealed up and if you do swamp the boat or something hopefully it won't sink because this is full of air uh, the other thing i did and i'm hoping the lights over here don't blind the camera um, i did the same thing over here but there's no hole on this one this one is below this knee i also put a, a panel and in here is full of eps expanded polystyrene i work for a foam eps manufacturer and so we've got lots of scrap and i know it can be good for that sort of thing it's just a void filler just in case you do poke a hole in there it won't leak, uh, or it won't fill with water rather. It might leak water, but it won't fill with water. So I think that's the only thing I deviated on from the plans. Um, maybe at the top here, next time I would, uh, this plywood, when you router this down or you plane this down, gets little bitty voids. And you can't really see it on the camera, but maybe you're picking up some of that shiny. So there's little bits of spots there where little low spots. I think I would come back with some wood putty and fill those in and make it a little smoother. Um, I did paint the bounce on the outside and the reason I did that and I've seen some guys you know they're bringing great plywood is beautiful on both sides in fact you see this is no little uh, repairs or anything on this plywood is really beautiful uh, there's no notch or anything um, the outside panel had a bunch of those little uh, oh actually there's a couple right here you see that little wafer looking thing there are a couple on this side but uh, the other side had none or this, most of the panels have none. This one has a little bit right there. The light can see it right, right here. At any rate, the outside had a bunch of them. So I decided, you know what, instead of varnishing that, I would paint it. And so we just painted it red. I think it looks cool red. So tools. The plans uh, give you a pretty comprehensive list of tools you might need. Uh, a few common tools you're going to need for sure. Jigsaw, a skill saw. A drill, hammer, small nails, zip ties, um, and a the two things I did not have, or actually three things I did not have that you will need. You'll need some saw horses or something to hold the boat up when you're assembling it. You're going to need access to a uh, table saw. You need the table saw because most material houses don't sell the wood in three quarter by three quarter sizes. You can get three quarter inch by four inch or three quarter inch by six inch uh, pieces of Douglas fir. But they don't make it in three quarter by three quarter. At least they don't sell it in the Home Depot and Lowe's here in Phoenix. In your area, they might. If they do, then you're way ahead. Buy that three quarter by three quarter stuff, and you're saving tons of time. But what we did with my neighbor has this uh, table saw, and so we just ripped it down to three quarter inch thicknesses, and that worked out great. The second tool that I recommend, and I did not have, and luckily my neighbor did. He lent it to me because I went and bought one of those little small. 
planers uh, to, to, to scrape down the wood and cut the edges and do all the things you need to do with the planer. Uh, he has something called a power planer. And that's an amazing little tool. It's designed really for uh, adjusting doors and stuff. And just, it cuts off a tiny bit of material at a time electric, with a, an electric motor. And it saves a ton of time. Uh, once he found out I needed that, he lent it to me, it just went, wow, so much easier and faster. Um, a big, massive time saver. So in addition to pre-coating your panels, <laughs> Uh, get, get a, a power planer. They're, I think I saw them online for 40 bucks, 50, 60, 70 bucks, depending on where you get them. Um, Lowe's and Home Depot both sell them. They're not a, not a super common tool, but they do exist. It's not something I own because I've never uh, done any, any work with doors or really a whole lot of woodworking. Most of my stuff is metal related with the cycle carts and that sort of stuff. But that was a huge lifesaver to have that tool access, access to that tool. And then, um, oh, one other thing. You will need a tape measure that is metric. Uh, I had the, found this at Lowe's, uh, Home Depot, other places, other places. It's got metric on the bottom and it's got the imperial or standard on the top, so inches on the top. Um, since all the plans here are in metric, instead of going through and converting it all, just get a metric uh, tape ruler. Um, with my wife had a small metal one that came in very handy for all the small dimensions. Uh, for the millimeters and things like that and forgive me. I'm not familiar with completely with the metric system um, I had my son had to <laughs> teach me a little bit how to use it honestly, but um, That is uh, the last tool that you definitely want to buy They're 10 or $14 or something like that. They're not a lot of money, but you're building a boat So buy a couple tools. It'll be helpful to you Okay guys, uh, that's the end of this video. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this little bit of uh, update on the boat. Hopefully it helps you in your boat adventure, uh, building a quick canoe. And thanks to Michael Storr and all the guys on the internet who've made some great videos and putting these together. It's really put together pretty well. Um, surprisingly well, actually. I've never, I was really intimidated by this project. I um, uh, wasn't sure I could pull it off. And the internet videos and watching and reading the book or the, the manual gave me the confidence that I can put this together and make it work, and I think you can too. Uh, thanks for watching, thanks for tuning in. If you enjoyed this video, we have other stuff, not boat related, mostly cycle car related. So if you'd like to learn more about cycle cars, we have some videos on our, our page about that. And uh, thanks for watching, have a great day, y'all.